Hello. In this video we're going to look specifically at the correlation coefficient and the correlation coefficient is symbolized by the letter R. And of course this is a topic that is a subset of linear regression or least squares regression. Okay. Now the correlation coefficient is so important it actually might be the single most important concept in this topic of linear regression. Okay. So in another in video we introduced a little bit what correlation coefficient is, but a definition you really should commit to memory is that the correlation coefficient measures how well a line, specifically a line, will fit the data. So we had gone through this a little bit. The symbol for this is R, the letter R. Correlation is always a number between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. So again, we had drawn this here. Let us just go over a little bit more in depth what this means. So if you have, for example, positive 1, what that means is all of your data values line up perfectly in a positively sloped line shape. So here we go. That means I could find a line that would go through every single data value, and there's absolutely no scatter, and it's got a positive slope. So again, that would still be true for a negative 1. Same idea, all the points line up perfectly in a negatively sloped line, can fit through them with no scatter, okay, and can get through every point. And of course, what happens is as soon as you introduce a little bit of scatter, so let me give you an example, like let's say you have a little bit of scatter, still the points are tight, you can see it's a positive uh, direction, and there's no curvature. So that might be like a correlation coefficient of 0.98. And as soon as you start to get a little bit more scatter, Maybe you drop down to 0.85, and so on and so forth. Maybe you have a little bit of curvature and some scatter. So at that point, so let's put it, you might drop down to, let's say, 0.7, right? Now, why would something have a correlation coefficient of zero, which was, means that it, you should not use a line at all? Well, it could be because you have like what I call the cloud. There's no pattern. Nothing would fit it. Or you might have something that really a line was never intended to model. So let's say you have something that's almost like a parabola, like that, right? It's curved. Well, a line was never intended for that. So you basically have these kind of things happening, and so we're going to look at how to tell, well, okay, what, what is likely to be a correlation coefficient for a particular uh, scatter plot. Um, let's take a look at it a little bit here few more ideas that I want you to know about correlation coefficient. So it helps determine the strength of the linear relationship. Again, the closer that your correlation coefficient is to positive or negative 1, the better a line fits your data. Okay. Also, there are no units associated with R. The units get canceled out. If you switch X and Y, the correlation stays the same because, again, you're measuring the strength of the scatter, right? and that stays the same. However, if you switch x and y, the equation on the line does not stay the same. So you just have to be careful there. So correlation is very responsive to outliers. Right? And here, very specifically, number 9 is extraordinarily important. Correlation does not equal causation. So an example, SAT math versus English. If you look at the math versus the English scores, they're very highly correlated. So what that means is generally when somebody does well on math, they also do well in the English. And if they don't do so well in math, tend not to do so well in English. Now, of course, these are just tendencies. There are people who do really well in one and not so well in the other. But you definitely see a high correlation. Now, if correlation were the same as causation and did imply causation, then what that would mean is... If I wanted to get better at math, I could just do more English. And we know that's absurd. So one doesn't cause the other. So what is going on here? What's going on is there are lurking variables. Okay? And the lurking variables could be, for example, maybe somebody's just smart. You know, It doesn't matter if they're doing math or English. They're smart. They're good at everything. Or maybe they're a good student. So they'll try a lot harder. They'll study hard no matter what subject it is. So you've got these lurking variables that are actually linking the, the the two variables, but even though they move together very strongly, and that's the correlation, it doesn't mean that one causes the other. So be very careful about that. And finally here, 
correlation only measures linear associations, no other shape. Okay? So again, we talked a little bit about this. The closer the correlation coefficient is to positive and negative 1, the stronger the or better a line fits the data. Here you have sort of a moderate correlation, and the closer you get to 0, very weak uh, linear association, you really should not use a line. Okay? So let's take a look at a few examples of scatter plots, and what you can see here is this is almost a cloud situation, so the correlation coefficient is zero. Here, correlation coefficient is still very low and negative. You can see a bit of a negative trend, but an awful lot of scatter. Over here, you see a little bit of curvature, but you can definitely see there's a positive association here, and the scatter isn't quite as bad, so correlation coefficient is 0.5. Here in this one, now you see the, all the points are really within a band almost, and so there's not nearly as much scatter, and it's definitely negative, so correlation coefficient is getting stronger, but just negative, so it's negative 0.7. And here you see even stronger. This is quite well fit by a line. It's positive, so correlation coefficient is 0.9. And here the very, very nice line, uh, correlation coefficient is negative 0.99. Right? So here let's take a look. When I go to match, for example, which correlation coefficient could be matched to which, or should be matched to which graph. What I think in my head is, which graph is best fit by a line? And so I can see that what C is, right? And I can see this is a negative association. So I'm looking for the negative number closest to negative 1. And that would be number 1. So I would say this is R equal negative 0.923. Then I look at the remaining three graphs, and I say, which would best, best be fit my line? And I can see B would, and it's a positive. So I want to go the highest number closest to positive 1, and that's 0 0.777. Between these two, there's a little, this is better fit by a line. It, you know, you can see it's negative, so this would be R equal point, negative 0 0.487. And honestly, by process of elimination, I would know this is 0 0.006. Okay. Now, let's take a look, pause the video, and see, go ahead and match these and see what you get. Okay, really pause it. All right, so here I'm thinking this is the one graph best fit by line, so I would say R is negative 0.977. Next, it looks like this is best fit by line, and it's positive, so I'm going to use positive 0.951. Between these two, this is best fit by line. It's got a little bit of curvature and some scatter, but it's positive. I can see that, 0.736. And finally here, this is whoop, R equal negative 0.021. And honestly, I wouldn't know. It, it Really, this one I can only tell by process of elimination and knowing that it's probably the worst, the exact worst one. So R is negative 0.021. All right, now when you're interpreting the correlation coefficient, here's a good format to use. You would always want to say whether there's a strong or a weak. Sometimes some books use moderate. We're going to kind of lean, not lean on the fence. It's going to be strong or weak. Um, and the break point in general, in general, although you had like three different um, categories here. Let me kind of pull that back up. All right. Though we had these three different areas here, generally a lot of people would agree in practice that 0.75 to 1 and negative 0.75 to negative 1 is strong. And pretty much everything else is really not that good. Okay, So the book sometimes uses this as moderate. But you should say whether something is strong or weak, positive or negative association, and then mention that it's linear between the explanatory and response variable. Okay, And then there is... Another um, use of R, we could square R, and when we square it, it gives us a way of measuring in a percent form the extent to which the explanatory variable accounts for the variation in the response variable. So for example, if you had the weight of a car and the mileage, and you knew those were linearly correlated, and that you had a very strong correlation, it's negative, then R squared, you actually take this number and square it, would be 0.86. And what that means is that 86% of the variation in the mileage is because of the weight of the car. So here's again a format you could use for R squared. Blank percent of the variation in the response variable is because of the explanatory variable. All right. So um, that concludes this video. 
um, I will go ahead and watch the example and we'll see how this is actually applied. Thanks so much for listening.